This is calculus video number three, and we are going to be finding the equations of tangents to curves. So first you might want to recall that a tangent to a curve will be a straight line. So this is really just finding the equations of straight lines. But let's have a look at a diagram there just to remind us that a tangent line would be a straight line touching a curve at one point only. Sometimes the diagram doesn't look like that, you know, depending on the thickness of the ink and so on. But you need to recall that a tangent line touches at one point only, and that would be called the point of tangency. Um, and as I said, we, because we're looking for the equation of a straight line, it's the same as you've done before in many topics, analytical geometry and the functions. We can use this formula to find the equation of a straight line. Some of you may be comfortable using y equals mx plus c and going ahead in that format. That's okay. I'm going to always do it in this one. This is also on the formula sheet. And just remember that the x1, y1 is a coordinate on the line and the m is its gradient. So whenever you have to find the equation of a straight line, providing you have a coordinate and you know what the gradient is, you can substitute into um, this formula and find the equation of the line. I think before we talk about this from a calculus point of view, we'll just practice that quickly. So determine the equation of a straight line. So already we know we want to use this formula. That passes through the point negative 1, 4 and has a gradient of 3. So we are given the point negative 1, 4. And we are told that the gradient is 3. Remember, this is our x1, y1, so we're going to substitute y minus the y-coordinate is equal to the gradient multiplied by x minus the x-coordinate. Just have to do a little bit of tidying up now. A negative and a negative make a positive. You could probably do this in less steps, but I'm just doing quite a few of them. 3 multiplied by x and 3 multiplied by 1. And now I'm going to add 4 to both sides to get rid of the minus 4 so that y is by itself. And my final answer, y is equal to 3x plus 7. So this skill, if you are good at it, means this part of the um, topic could be much easier for you because at least then you're just focusing on the calculus ideas if finding the equation is easy. So this is the kind of question you could get. Determine the equation of the tangent to y equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 at the point where x is equal to negative 2. So remember what you need. Let's write the formula down ready because we might not be using it straight away because I think you've not noticed that there is some information missing. But write it down so that you are focusing your intention on what you do need. You need a coordinate and you need the gradient. So we were told that the tangent to the function, we're given the function, and we're told at the point x equals negative 2. So therefore we must be able to put negative 2 into the function and find the corresponding y number. So we were given the x number, so we're just going to substitute to find the y number. So I'm going to substitute x is negative 2 into the function. And then we do this calculation. Negative 2 squared is 4. Multiplied by 2 is 8. Negative 3 multiplied by negative 2 is plus 6. And add those together and we get 15. So let's put this here ready. I know it is the point negative 2, 15. Keep in mind the point of tangency belongs to the straight line, the tangent itself, and it belongs to the function because they share it. That is the point of tangency. Now we need to find the gradient. So this is where you need to recall your calculus. To find the gradient of a tangent at any point, we need to find the derivative of the function. So I'm looking up here to find the derivative. Exponent multiplied by coefficient. And again, the 1 that we can't see there multiplied by the coefficient. And that's x to the 0, and the constant would be 0. So our derivative is 4x minus 3. We know that this is the expression representing the gradient of 
the tangent at any point. That's why we have a variable in it, it's any point. But we know what point we're interested in. So therefore, our gradient will be 4 multiplied by negative 2, subtract 3. So negative 8 minus 3 gives us a gradient of negative 11. Now that I have the gradient, I'm ready to find the equation of the line. So y minus 15 is equal to the gradient multiplied by x, subtract negative 2, so I'm adding 2. Multiply the negative 11 in. Add 15 to both sides. So y is equal to negative 11x, negative 7, minus 7. Okay, let's have a look at the second example. Find the equation of the tangent to the function x squared minus 4x and it's parallel to g of x equals 2x minus 4. So we're looking for the equation of a tangent um, which happens to be parallel to this line. Remember what you know about parallel lines, that they have equal gradients. So, so far they've actually told us the gradient, but not in so many words. We are expected to know that the gradient is represented by the coefficient of x. So therefore now we need a point. We don't seem to have any information about any point. But what we do know is that the gradient is 2. So if we find the derivative of the function, 2 multiplied by 1 and 1 multiplied by negative 4. So that is our derivative. And we already know the gradient that we want. So we can work in reverse. Remember, the derivative is the gradient at any point. So therefore, I can put the gradient in to the derivative where, where it says derivative because it is the gradient at any point. And I can solve for x. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides, divide both sides by 2. So now I do know my x-coordinate of the point I'm interested in. So now I have part of the x-coordinate. So I have the gradient and I have half of a coordinate. Remember last time we found the other part of the coordinate by substituting it into the function because we know that this point, 3 something, lies on the function and it lies on um, the tangent. Don't be fooled into thinking you're going to use this. The only reason that was given to you so that you could say what the gradient was of um, the line that you are interested in. So using the function we're going to substitute 3. So when x is 3 we are currently working out what is the corresponding y number. And it's negative 3. So therefore we now know the gradient and a point. So let's continue with that calculation. Remember to find the gradient of a line, we always use this. In there we need to put the gradient and that point, so y subtract negative 3 means I've got y plus 3, the gradient multiplied by x subtract 3. Let's multiply the 2 in and subtract 3 from both sides to get the y by itself, so we have the equation of the tangent um, to that function. Okay, we have a final question to do. Determine the value of d if y equals minus 2x plus d is a tangent to that function. So first of all you need to notice that you have been given the gradient. So now we just need a coordinate. Always remind yourself when you are looking for the equation of a tangent to whatever it is you need the gradient and a point. We've been given the gradient, so we're looking for a point. Um, so again, a little bit like the previous example, if we find the derivative of this function, we've got 3 multiplied by 4 thirds, so that's 4x, and dropping that by 1 is 4x squared, minus 3. So that is what our derivative looks like. We know the gradient, and the derivative is the gradient. So by doing this, we can now solve um, for x, 
because it's a quadratic we want everything to equal 0 so I'm adding 2 to both sides I have a difference of 2 squares so I'm factorizing when you have a product of two factors equaling 0 then each one of those factors could be 0 in the first one subtract 1 from both sides divide by 2 in the second one add 1 to both sides divide by 2 so x could be negative a half or plus a half so in other words there's two possible points so we have to run with that and work out how it would um, what the d would finally be if there were two possible points so let me just clear here so the, we remember we know the gradient is um, negative 2 and it's negative 2 whether x is equal to a half or whether x is equal to negative a half it's, the gradient is still negative 2 so basically we have two questions to do here so we're going to work with x is negative a half first I need, I've got my x coordinate I don't know my y coordinate so I need to put the x coordinate into the function and find the corresponding y coordinate when x is equal to negative a half so if we do that um, calculation and you could obviously use your calculator this would be minus one sixth plus three over two plus one and that is equal to seven over three so when x is negative a half y is 7 over 3 now let's have a look at the um, when x is a half so we're going to do a similar thing we need to put half into x's place into the function so we can calculate what y is when x is equal to a half this would be 1 6th minus 3 over 2 plus 1 and that is equal to minus one third. So when x is a half, y is minus one third. Now we still haven't found um, the d, which was the actual question. So we now need to use that information. Keep in mind that both points we found, this point, lies on the function and it also lies on the tangent itself. This point it also lies on the function and lies on the tangent itself. So we can substitute this point now into x and y's place in the um, equation that we were almost given. So let's just write the equation down. Remember we knew that y is equal to minus 2x plus d. We're going to use this point and substitute into x and y's place and find d. And then we're also going to use this point and substitute into x and y's place to find d. I'm just going to clear again. So just a reminder, we are using um, y equals minus 2x plus d. I'm substituting this into x and y's place. So 7 thirds equals minus 2 multiplied by negative a half plus d. So negative and negative make a positive and this would be equal to 1 plus d. So I subtract 1 from both sides, 7 thirds minus 1 is equal to d, so d must be equal to 4 thirds. Now I'm going to do the same here. Here's my x number, my y number, substitute it in. And negative 2 times a half is negative 1. Add 1 to both sides. Um, 1 take away a third is 2 thirds is equal to D. So there were two possible values for D that would make all of that information true and that was either 4 thirds or 2 thirds. That brings us to the end of that video. The following video will be about sketching cubic graphs.